Hello, this is the next part of Performance Robots. These are robots that I'm going to be taking to shows as well as making YouTube content. They've primarily been designed for performances. So they're controlled by DMX, which is a common lighting protocol for disco lights. And that means there's lots of third-party software out there. I'm using QLC Plus to control the show at the moment. And so far, I'm able to script up music and motions and put together a robot show. I've also dressed one of the robots as Terminator, which you should check out if you haven't seen it, so we can do installations and various other things as well. The next part of the plan is to make an interactive show that the public can interact with, or at least a few people who are watching, through various interfaces. I built a barcode scanner guitar, which is interfaced to Ableton as a control surface, so I'm able to DJ up music loops, so check that video out. And I've also built a 720 LED visualizer, which is floor standing, and that's going to be part of the show as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to build interfaces that the audience can interact with the show while it's running, either partly or entirely run the show, and that's going to interface to both Ableton and to QLC Plus to control the robots and sounds and music and lighting. So I fitted encoders to each of those, which of course can rotate round and round and round and round and round and round and round, and you can never break the end stop like on a potentiometer. So that's going to be pretty good. The next stage we've got is the top that goes on, which is going to have a captive nut and a grub screw to grip the shaft. And then we're going to have coloured tops on. So I've got my knobs on, we've got red, green and blue, and of course these are pretty sturdy. They're mounted on these massive bearings, which are pretty tight actually, so you can't spin them round and round, and they should be practically indestructible. Right, I've mounted those up on a nice aluminium piece of 2020 rails with some nice NinjaFlex feet on, and I've also got some electronics in a box. Yep, it's a lovely box of wires, but basically we've got an Arduino Mega with an Ethernet shield on, so I can send the data out through OSC over Ethernet. We've got a little power breakout board there, which is 5 volts and ground for each of the encoders, and the pins from the encoder for the A and B phase are wired to the interrupt pins on the Mega, of which there are 6. So I've written some code which is using interrupt service routines on the 6 pins to read the 3 encoders. And those have interrupt service routines down the bottom, which I got from Arduino Playgrounds for the encoder examples. And there's two for each encoder for the A and B phases that work out which way it's turning when those interrupt pins are triggered. And so far, we're just putting that data out to the serial terminal. So if I open a serial monitor, we should be able to see that we've got some zeros. And as I turn the knobs, each of those counts up and down as it should do. So now we just need to scale those values so they fit with DMX and MIDI control and go and dump those out over OSC using the Ethernet shield. So the next piece of code writes those messages out over OSC. So I'm just using the OSC UDP send example that comes with the OSC library. So I've included all the libraries I need there, SPI and everything, and the Ethernet shield. I need to make that Ethernet shield work. We've set up the IPs. This is the IP that's the IP of the Arduino with the Ethernet shield. Obviously, it's on a private network. And these are the IP address and port that we're targeting. Now, this is the first universe in QLC+, and this is the IP address of the computer running QLC+, on the network. I've then scaled and constrained that data, so I've made sure that the data stays definitely within the range 0 to 1000 on the encoder, and then I've scaled that down to 0 to 255, which are valid DMX values. MIDI only runs 0 to 127, but we'll talk about that later. I've done that for the red and the green as well. Then I've made sure that we only send an OSC message if the data changes, so we bookmark it afterwards and check that it's not the same as last time, so we're not just sending lots and lots of messages of the same value. And this is the OSC send message code that came with the example. So it has a message header of blue, and we send the blue value. So I'm using QLC Plus 4.12.2, which is the latest version at the time of recording. In my input output dialog here, I've got my OSC ticked as input, and of course that's the IP address of this machine on the local network for the first universe. The second universe would be another one on the end of there, and an OSC output with another one on the end of there. On my virtual console I've set up three faders, one for red, one for blue, and one for green. And if we go and click on one of these, we can see we've got some things here, and we can basically go and auto-detect the message coming in. Now I'm only sending data of course when I move that knob if it's different from the last value. So if we click on auto detect nothing happens until I move the green knob. 
And then we should see it detects OSC and it detects the input channel, which is probably some hash of the title I've given it there. If we now click on play, we should find those knobs respond when I twiddle them. And of course QLC Plus is a piece of DMX software, so I've now linked up an RGB DMX lighting bar and we can control the intensity of RGB with those knobs which are just mapped straight to the faders that I implemented. And of course the robots are DMX controlled as well, so as well as controlling lighting the audience will be able to control robotic motion. So imagine a five year old using those three encoders to control multiple axes of the robot at once with one axis, another one on the other axis and perhaps the head motions with the other axis, as well as affecting the RGB values for the LED visualizer, my LED DJ mask and anything else that's on the stage at the same time. Now I am going to allow the audience to control sound as well using Ableton, but before I demo how that's going to work, I'm going to build at least another couple of interfaces. The next interface is a bunch of ultrasonic rangefinders, which are currently attached to this piece of wood, but I've got some covers made for them so we can mount them on a nice piece of extrusion, and that's going to make kind of a Jedi hand controller that you can wave your hand in front of, and we can get a position value. Right, that's all mounted up on a piece of 2020 extrusion with some nice rubber feet so it sits nicely on the desktop, and of course the Arduino with its Ethernet shield are mounted in this box which has also got some rubber feet to stop it slipping. Each of these ultrasonic transducers has a trigger pin and a receive pin and you pulse the trigger pin for a short amount of time and then you listen on the echo pin to receive how far away the object is which is basically the length of time the ultrasonic ping takes. So I've combined all of the trigger pins to pin two in this case and we're pulsing those for a short amount of time and then listening on the receive pin on that echo pin to see how far away the object is from the sensor. And I'm doing that on five different pins for the five different sensors so I can work out the position of something above the array. I've thresholded each value here to give me a one or a zero and then after some filtering with a first order filter that lives down at the bottom we can work out a nice smoothed position of my hand for instance over the array. So as well as writing an OSC message with that we've put that out to the serial terminal. So we should be able to see the individual ones and zeros getting triggered as I move above them and the overall smooth position in the range 0 to 255. So if we move over to QLC we can see we've got this fader called Jedi that I've set up and if I move my hand over the array here we should be able to move its position all the way down and all the way back up again just by waving an object over the array. And I've got one more interface which is pinball machine buttons which are mounted on a piece of wood with some rails there and some rubber feet. And again we've got another Arduino in the box. This one's not doing very much because these are just switches. So I've got a little expansion port on the side that I'll eventually plug more switch interfaces into. We'll just share the same Arduino. So of course if we go into QLC these have some functions. At the moment I've mapped them to faders that go from 0 to 255 when you press them. I could have used buttons on the virtual console of VLC but I thought it's more useful to have an actual whole swing of a value here that actually does something. So all the buttons are set for 0 or 255 in code on the Arduino and again that value is transmitted over with unique OSC messages. Those are all the interfaces I'm going to build in this video. On my expansion port for my buttons I'm also going to add some floor pressure pads that kids can jump on at shows and in the past I discussed some other interfaces including webcam face tracking using a piece of software called My Robot Lab and that also communicates over OSC straight into QLC+. So now I'm going to talk about how we're going to link all these interfaces as well as to the robotic DMX motions and lighting to sound using Ableton Live. Now there are several versions of Ableton Live and if you've used Ableton you'll know there's several pricing tiers. The most expensive one is over £500 and that one will actually natively talk to OSC using the Max programming language which comes with that version. And there's a connection pack that allow interfaces to Arduino, Lego Mindstorms and various other things you can do with OSC that you can code yourself. And you can link to pretty much any aspect of a synth or design your own synths as well with Max. However, I don't have that version, I'm only using the £60 version which is Ableton Intro and that doesn't have such functionality. However, it will interface to MIDI as will QLC+. So I'm going to use a MIDI out from QLC to go and interface to the input of Ableton to control sounds when we click those buttons in the virtual console of QLC.
And to do that, I'm using a separate piece of software called Loop MIDI, which is pretty much free, or you can donate, and that will make a loopback MIDI port so we can go out of one piece of software with MIDI and into another one on the same PC without getting two physical MIDI ports and putting a cable between them. So in QLC, I've said that I've got my Loop MIDI port here is my output on that universe. My OSC is still the input, and I'm sending control change messages on channel 4. And what I've done, as well as having those switches and things on the virtual console, still operating my console buttons, I've linked each one of those to a DMX channel on my actual DMX desk. So now all of these will bring up the faders, and my Jedi strip will operate channel 40. In Ableton, I've set up a MIDI input port, which is again that loop MIDI port, and that is set to input. So Ableton has a very handy feature, which is that we can link any aspect of the control to incoming MIDI signals by just clicking on this MIDI button in the top right hand corner, clicking on what we want to assign and pressing our physical interface and you'll see the items appearing here, channel 4, MIDI controller number 29. So there we go, let's do the next one and the next one and of course it's getting that MIDI from QLC, which is that still sat right down here. Um, operating that and sending those channels out on the MIDI channel. I'm also going to assign the cutoff frequency of my filter on the synth to my Jedi strip, which should pop up there, controller 39. And that now means if I press some buttons, we should be able to hear the synth there. And if I wave my hand over the strip, we should be able to see that knob turning down at the bottom. As I'm doing so, and that's affecting the sound, and we can see the Jedi strip is still moving here as well. So let's just click on one of these, which I'll eventually sign to a button, which is um, some drums. So you can hear the beat, and you'll notice whenever I change these, it waits and brings them perfectly in time with the beat. That seems to be working pretty well, so now of course it's time to link the robot, the lights and lots of other things into the show and control them with those interfaces.
And of course, all I did there was attach various interfaces, the buttons and everything to QLC so we could control the lighting and the robotic motion chases. And what I really need to do is make little shows of dances for the chorus and various different parts of the song, which play back when you press the buttons as well as changing the music instead of just random motions with one arm going up and down and things like that. But that is all to come. The next video is going to be setting up both robots with the LED fence and the barcode scanner guitar and the LED visualizer mask that I made, all of these interfaces, webcam face tracking and the floor pressure pads I'm going to plug into my little interface on here and then we'll do a demo of the whole show both with me DJing it using the barcode scanner guitar and other interfaces and the audience controlling the whole thing. Just a quick ad for my Patreon, if you'd like to support me have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live stream with me, all my videos early and sneak peeks and pictures of other projects. If you don't like Patreon I also have YouTube channel membership so just click on that join button below. I also have a t-shirt store selling various designs, not this one, but various other projects and I'll have some performance robots t-shirts coming soon hopefully so don't forget to check that out. Alright that's all for now.